Good morning and welcome to the 35th annual Athena Leadership Award Program brought to you by the Greater Wausau Chamber of Commerce. I'm Mona Fox, one of your hosts for today and a recipient of last year's Athena Leadership Award. I'm really happy to be here with you today, especially after getting COVID-19. Oh, no, 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 not the pandemic, the pounds. See, I put on that COVID-19 because of my kids being home quarantined. But seriously, we have had a challenging year this year for all of us. We've had to deal with the pandemic, but we've also had to deal with a whole new vocabulary. I learned to pivot, which I didn't even know my body could do, let alone my brain. And I've learned to socially distance, which I thought just meant avoiding the neighbors. And I've learned the term abundance of caution, which I thought just meant I had to slow down during construction. And sadly, and kind of embarrassed about this, but I actually showed up for my first Zoom call uh, to, to, to sweat, thinking that I was supposed to wear sweats. Well, turns out you can wear sweats now every day from the waist down when you're on these video calls. So see, COVID has been good for some things. Seriously though, we are very fortunate to have this technology to bring us together today for this annual program. And I am so happy to be co-hosting this morning's program with my friend, Laura Blado, the 2019 Athena Young Professional Leadership Award recipient. So Laura, I guess that makes me old and you young? You said it, not me. <laughs> Thanks, Mona. You hit the nail on the head, though. I'm Laura Blado, and I was the recipient of the 2019 Young Athena Award, and I'm thrilled to get to be here today with Mona to not only announce this year's Young Athena Award, but thank you, COVID, co-host this program. It's hard to see some positives that come out of COVID this year, but this is definitely a highlight for me. Before we continue with the program, though, we'd like to say a special thank you to all of today's sponsors. Today's presenting sponsor is O'Malley Cadillac Honda. Silver sponsors include UMR, Wisconsin Public Service Corp, and the bronze sponsor, Ruta Ware. Thanks, Laura, and thank you, sponsors. Today, we have the privilege of celebrating the contributions and achievements of 14 area professionals who have demonstrated their commitment to supporting, honoring, and developing current and emerging women leaders. These individuals are the finalists for the 2020 Athena Leadership Award and the Athena Young Professional Leadership Award. You will have the opportunity to learn more about each of the finalists in the videos that will be shown momentarily. The two Athena Leadership Awards created by Athena International were inspired by Athena, the goddess of Greek mythology, known for her strength, courage, wisdom, and enlightenment. The awards are based on the Athena leadership model featuring the eight principles of enlightened leadership and the unique way women lead. Those principles are live authentically, learn constantly, advocate fiercely, act courageously, foster collaboration, build relationships, give back, and celebrate. That's right, Laura, and traits we should all try to live by. Since the program's inception in 1982, nearly 8,000 exemplary leaders have been recognized with the prestigious Athena Award in more than 500 regions, representing 48 states and 11 countries, including the United States, Bermuda, the UK, China, Canada, Greece, India, Russia, the United Arab Emirates, Ghana, and Mexico. Some of the recipients of the award here nationally include the former and very beloved U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, members of Congress, Olympic gold medalists, celebrities, philanthropists, and many more. The Greater Wasa Chamber of Commerce has one of the oldest and most established Athena programs in the United States in its 35th year of celebrating and honoring individuals. At this time, we would like to recognize the past recipients of the Athena Leadership Award and the Athena Young Professional Leadership Award.
A complete list of all the past recipients can be found at wasachamber.com. Now on to this year's awards. The first award that will be presented is the Athena Young Professional Leadership Award, established locally in 2007. The Athena Young Professional Leadership Award honors an emerging leader who demonstrates excellence, creativity, and initiative in their business or profession, contributes time and energy to improve the quality of life for others in the region, and clearly serves as a role model for women, both personally and professionally. For me, this past year as the Young Athena Leadership winner has brought about more change than I could have ever imagined, both personally and professionally. Last year was the second time I had been nominated, and it happened to be among a special group of women who, at Mindy Hoppy, one of this year's nominees urging, got together for lunch to get to know one another. That day at our lunch, listening to the stories of my fellow nominees and knowing where I came from to get there, it became so much more clear to me what this award actually stands for and what an incredible community of women leaders we have here in WASA. The relationships and camaraderie forged that day has become one of the most valuable parts of this entire experience for me. There's a level of passion, stress, emotion, and exhaustion that happens when you're in leadership positions that often clash with work and life balances. And sometimes that can feel isolating. If you're not surrounded by people who understand that, that unique dynamic and are able to laugh or cry with you or fill your tank again, burnout tends to become a reality. If there's anything this year has taught all of us, it's that you need people, you need connections, you need relationships, and I'm incredibly grateful for the friendships I've formed with the last year's nominees. This year's class of nominees is once again a stellar group of women, and I still have to pinch myself to believe that most of these ladies are personal friends of mine, and the women I've just met are definitely women I can't wait to get to know more. I'm proud and honored still to forever have my name associated with yours and your amazing accomplishments in our community. While this year has prevented us from being able to duplicate last year's in-person networking, I hope you nominees have found yourself in awe of one another and will take advantage of social media and other alternative forms of networking to get to know, support, and continue to inspire one another. What a world we can create when women like you are leading the charge with an army of like-minded ladies behind you. So congratulations again to each one of you on your nominations. Before we announce the 2020 recipient, let's watch a video highlighting each finalist for the Athena Young Professional Leadership Award. My name is Cassandra Ambrosius. I'm the Communications Director at the Boys and Girls Club of the Wausau area. When I think about um, bringing other women along, I really think to my time with the Boys and Girls Club as well as my time as a big through Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, my relationship with my little, she's um, only eight years old, but I can already see a lot of development in her from her young age. When we first started connecting, she was a lot more reserved, a little quiet, and now we you know, talk about a range of subjects um, through her schooling to her personal life, her family life. Um, and she really has come into her own over the years that we've known each other. My work with the March 22nd Memorial Establishment, I think really opened my eyes to how beautiful this community is. And I think the same can be said any time our community goes through struggle. Through the development of the March 22nd Memorial, um, I really saw an opportunity that um, I couldn't do it by myself. So when I started kind of brainstorming how to come up with the monument, I knew it was gonna be a large undertaking. So starting the run obviously seemed like the easy way to raise money. Uh, quickly learned it wasn't that easy, but um, also learned there's this massive network of people that are willing to step up and help. So being a leader I think is also utilizing the resources and capabilities of other people and knowing when you need to ask for help and knowing that there are other people out there that know more than you and using that as a collective to get a mission accomplished. My name is Samantha Diedrich. I am a sales executive with Aspirus Business Health Services. I have been honored to be the lead coach for our organizational learning and development department at Aspirus, where I empower other emerging leaders in our Aspirus system to, to reach their greatest potential and learn leadership qualities. And I'm always trying to get our women in our system to, to step up and, and 
take on leadership roles. They already have the leadership qualities. Now it's a matter of just taking ownership of them in a leadership role. I try to be the person that brings joy to the table. Um, when tensions are high, I'm usually the person there to break the tension and you know bring us back to what's, what's the greater meaning of why we're here. This is my third time being nominated, and every time I've been up here, it brings more clarity to my purpose. I, there's one message that I think I could give. It would be to find your purpose and do the same. Um, find what your knowledge, skills, and abilities are, and use that purpose to, to help something, you know, benefit something greater than yourself. My name is Jenny Fecto, and I am a senior marketing consultant of events and administration at Church Mutual Insurance Company. I like to advocate for people advocating for themselves. I think it's a really easy rut to get into that we always cheer on our friends and our family and our coworkers, and we're all so supportive. And it's sometimes, you become the back burner sometimes of, you know, I, my problems are my problems. I don't have to worry about it. I'll get over it. And it's so hard to take that minute and say, I'm allowed to feel my feelings. I'm allowed to say I need help or ask for help. And it's so hard to do that and feel free to do that without a little bit of guilt or a little bit of, you know, I'm just not sure if I should do that. So I like to think that I, when I'm talking to my friends who are having a rough time, I tell them, you, you need to also be advocating for yourself. If you're overwhelmed at work, you need to speak up. No one's gonna assume you're overwhelmed if you don't say you're overwhelmed. So. It's, it's definitely something that I've had to learn and grow into. I'm not the best at it. It really is so important to take those, those mental health moments and take some time for yourself and to say, what do, what do I need to get through this? And how can I do that without compromising my other relationships? My name is Christine Gunderson. I am the Outreach Program Manager for UW-Stevens Point at WASA. I think one of the most fiercely advocate-based times of my life um, was when I worked for the Scouts not that long ago and with bringing girls into the program that had so much controversy around it and at the end of the day my job was to serve kids and so I found myself advocating for women and their ability to do anything they wanted to do. I found myself advocating for myself and my role in my job I advocated for women who were in leadership positions at the Scouts and their right to make choices and decisions for their units. Um, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my professional career to go to bat for women that consistently all the time in every conversation I was in. Um, but I, am, I feel so blessed to have been working there at that point in time and to be able to say that I did that and that I did advocate that fiercely. I was able to get some grant money set aside and I was able to use some of my children's books that have non-white characters to um, increase the frequency that a person of color is going to be able to find a book that represents them in their school library. Literacy with kids is improved when they pick up a book more than once and a kid is more likely to pick up a book a second time if they identify with the main character. So having more books that represent every kid available to them is really important to improving literacy, which improves job retention, all sorts of things down the line for kids. Um, so we were able to get 30 books to downtown Minneapolis, and um, we have another 30 that are going out into the Wassa community as well. My name is Mindy Happy. I'm the owner of Design Theory 19. I'm a huge advocate for mentoring. Um, I Unfortunately, I was never one to have a mentor the first probably eight years of my career. Um, so the last few years have been a, a key hitting home type of scenario. So having a lot of interns that come in, really taking one-on-one -on -one time with them to really mentor them and have them grow in their base foundation so when they go out to the job field, that they're ready and successful for it. So kind of going through a scenario for having one of my interns that I end up hiring, you know, I took a lot of time with her to really challenge her to allow her to grow her base foundation and let her kind of work on her own, you know, knowing that she can do it herself, not that she has to rely on someone else. So the biggest lesson I learned from a little age or young age on was treating others the way you want to be treated. You know, being approachable, being honest, trustworthy, that's how I create relationships. 
as most people know, I'm pretty even keeled, you know, from that start. So what you get at work is what you get at, you know, gatherings. You know, it's always nice to be having that person that really trusts and values your opinion. My name is Sarah Lays and I'm the Director of Affinity Groups at United Way of Marathon County. So if you can't tell from my smile, I'm, I'm a pretty happy person. Um, I've been told that through coworkers or um, volunteers that I work with and I firmly believe that being positive and bringing forth that positive light helps in a variety of ways. You know, we all work and we know that work can be challenging sometimes so even as simple as sending an email or a phone call or leaving a note on somebody's desk letting them know, hey, your work is, it's not going unnoticed, keep it up. That's what I try to bring to the leadership realm. Many of us, we've had to change the way in which we do things. So, for example, with Women United, we weren't able to do our signature event, Power of the Purse. Last year, that brought in and distributed over $28,000 to the community. We didn't feel that it was the best year to go out and ask our local businesses to donate because we felt they're probably being impacted pretty hard right now. Um, so instead, we turned to our membership and members were able to donate their fees or they were able to donate online. And overall, we were able to give out $10,000 this year. So still a huge impact. Um, and same thing for emerging leaders. We typically have smack hunger, 400 people. It's fun, right? You've got the music going, you're packing food. We weren't able to do that. So instead, we still got 16 organizations together safely. Um, they met at their own facilities and we packed over 2,500 bags to distribute to children for breakfast packs. So again, adaptability, flexibility, being willing to hear your committees out with their frustrations and being able to guide them in a positive way on how can we continue to impact the community. My name is Dr. Angie Servi, and I am the Dean of Grants, Research, and College Effectiveness at North Central Technical College. As leaders, we need to be, you know, the strong one and, and show people that it's going to be okay and, you know, maybe stronger than what we're feeling. Um, and I think that is part of leadership too, but at the same time, I think it is important to have authenticity. When my husband was deployed, so he deployed two times with the Army. Um, so both of those times I was the family readiness group leader and the role of that person is being the main contact for wives and families while the, of deployed soldiers. And it is, it's something where you do need to, you know, be reassuring and strong, but also it doesn't work if you're not authentic because you know, you need to show the families that you're also, you know, you're right, you are there with them and you're going through the same things. Um, we went through a lot together and um, I made a lot of really good friends throughout and we still keep in touch today. So, you know, it was more than just a leadership role because I allowed myself to really make connections. I guess, you know, this is something that I kind of always stand by with my leadership, but just like teamwork is always richer than doing it yourself. My name is Lada Zhang Bang and I'm a business development manager for Environments. My volunteer world, I am, I sit on the board as vice president for Central Wisconsin Hmong Professionals and that group is a group of very amazing um, group of people who just have so much energy and are great individuals that um, just want to make our community better. And so when we host events or pull things together to make it happen in our community, I always encourage them to take a role um, that they might not be comfortable with, but I know that they have the capabilities of doing it right. And that just because someone has a title doesn't mean that they're the one that makes everything happen. Everybody. Um, really can lead from any position, kind of that lateral leadership style where um, it's not you know, hierarchical and everyone can make something happen. We need to not keep on going back and saying this is why we're doing this. We need to look forward and be co-creators of our future and say, hey, how do we want the world to be like? How would we want it to be better? Let's start shifting in that direction everyone to know, all the women out there, that they are enough and they are doing enough 
and I want to mimic what Ruth Bader Ginsburg says, um, that women belong in all places where decisions are being made. My name is Callie Yaklovich, and my title is Human Resources Business Advisor with Whipley. I'm on a committee through the United Way here. It's called Baby Business, and it focuses on business leaders throughout Marathon County and the importance of early childhood education. So sometimes I think it's like, well, those two things don't go together, right? We have early childhood education over here, and we have our business leaders over here. But what we're running into, especially as I've been a recruiter here in Marathon County, we're running into a lot of educated women who are leaving the workforce because they can't find quality childcare, so they're choosing to stay home. And if that's what they want, that's great. But if they really want to be in the workforce and really want to either utilize their education, their skill sets, their experience, their knowledge, then we want them to be in the workforce too. So as a part of that committee, um, one of the things that is also a big passion of mine, and this is since I've had my son, is our country's policy in terms of a leave for women as they are trying to recuperate from having a baby and then trying to get back into the workforce and maybe start their job again. It's a scary time. It's overwhelming. There's a lot of emotions. Like I said, your body is still healing. So one of the things that I advocated for in a past role of mine was to improve our parental leave policy. So I looked at the research, the data that's out there, what other you know, high um, first class companies are doing, and really wanted to put something together that would make the most sense for the organization, but also be a benefit for the women that we employ and making sure that they want to come back and they want to return and we know how much we value them in the organization and we value their work. Okay. Please note finalist applications were scored based on specific criteria and a scorecard provided by Athena International and award recipients have not been notified in advance. We'll be hosting a Facebook Live video at 1 p.m. when we present the award to the Athena Young Professional Leadership Award recipient. So without further ado, the recipient of the 2020 Athena Young Professional Award is... The 2020 Athena Young Professional Leadership Award recipient is Mindy Hoppy. Congratulations, Mindy. Oh, congratulations, Mindy. Well deserved. And thank you, Laura. Now the second award will be presented for the Athena Leadership Award. The Athena Leadership Award honors a leader who has achieved the highest level of professional excellence who's contributed time and energy to improve the quality of life for others in our community, and who has assisted others, particularly women, in realizing their full leadership potential. I can tell you that receiving the Athena Award last year was truly the most humbling experience I've ever had. And those same feelings continue to this day when people ask me about the award or they ask me to participate in an organization or help lead a project. When I learned that I won last year, I had an abundance of pride and I immediately sat down and made a list of the organizations that I hadn't yet had the opportunity to support in some way. I was really eager to get out there and help even more. And then the pandemic hit and I found that my leadership would be tested in a very different way. First, I had to pivot and prioritize my family's needs for virtual learning, for working remote, and for running a virtual office for a while. And while quite frankly, doing everything virtual for a while. Like all of you, my ability to lead in the pandemic was tested and not without its challenges. But I think we can all say that we're stronger leaders because of what we're going through this year. We've learned new skills, we've adopted new technology, and we've made virtual friends. That's actually another way that I've gained over this past year. I was invited to join the Athena Global Cafe, 
where winners from across the world come together virtually to share their stories and successes and issues and share resources that are facing them across the globe. Um, and what I found is that leaders here in central Wisconsin are really not all that much unlike leaders across the globe. We're all facing the same things, especially during the pandemic. And we're all really stretched as leaders. I'm proud to represent Central Wisconsin as your 2019 Athena Leadership Award winner and now represent on a global stage. In a weird way, I guess I have the pandemic to thank for stretching my leadership skills. And I hope that you're finding a silver lining in this new normal as much as you can. So now, before announcing the recipient, let's watch a video highlighting each finalist for the Athena Leadership Award. My name is Christine Gilmore and I'm the superintendent of DC Everest Area School District and a wife and a mother. So when I came back to um, the Weston area and to DC Everest, I thought it was really my calling to provide opportunities for kids um, in this community. Uh, and I think about the recent referendum, I think about opening school and giving families choices. The easiest choice would have been just to be virtual, but to me, the better choice was to give families options. Um, I really believe we have to remove barriers for our kids. And so whatever it takes, I think most people who know me in this community is it's, if I think something's good for kids, it's hard to tell me no. Uh, it's an honor to be nominated for an award like this, but we're all leaders in our own way. And we all can provide people with encouragement, uplifting, and I think we have that responsibility to share the load with each other, uh, especially during difficult times. It's whether you help your neighbor, whether you encourage a, a child that lives in your neighborhood. We're all here, and so I think it's going to take all of us through this pandemic, each and every one, and we all have gifts to bring. Um, I'm humbled that I was nominated but I'm really here because so many people in this community gave me that opportunity a long time ago. And so if you can do anything, try to give back. My name is Amber Gober. I am a business development specialist and mortgage loan officer with People State Bank. If you're being authentic to yourself, you truly need to be that all the time. So even though it might not be a popular decision with others, you sometimes have to give it just for the fact that you know you need to live your best life and you need to be true to yourself. So when I'm a part of different organizations and I'm a part of different groups and I'm at work and I'm at home with friends, wherever it may be, even though it's not necessarily going to be the popular decision of what we're you know, talking about or discussing, I feel like I always need to give my opinion on it you know, if I feel it's valuable to the group as well versus just sit there and agree with something I maybe don't believe in. So with this year, um, definitely been trying times. You know, my kids are doing the virtual schooling as I'm trying to work. So a lot of the times I end up working from home. And so they're gonna see mom on the kitchen table, you know, doing my thing every day. And they're being a part of, or being able to hear the different meetings that I'm involved with or conversations I'm having with. Um, last night was a great example. We had a Women United evening night in. And part of it was a craft project, so I knew my daughter would absolutely love being a part of that. But the other part of it was listening to um, an organization that we give grants to on how those grant funds truly impact their organization and the people that they help. Well, my daughter got to hear that. She would never have gotten to hear that before. My name is Chrissy Kelby, and I am the owner and operator of a small company called Mulligal LLC, where I sell women's golf apparel. I have had a chronic illness since I was seven, very similar to lupus, and I learned from my parents at a young age that I had to advocate for myself. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm pretty much an open book, and I definitely wear my heart on my sleeve, but that doesn't mean I, you know, I don't want to be taken seriously. I want people that I work for or lead to know a little bit about me, know what's important to me. And I want to know the same for them. And I think having that open communication that isn't always about work really lets them know when you're, you're being authentic. 
I also think as a leader, it's really important to understand that people learn and respond differently to different management styles and learning styles. And I think as a leader, it's up to you to at least meet them halfway or acknowledge that, that you're the one who probably needs to make more of a change. My name is Shireen Seward. I'm publisher of Wausau Pilot and Review and the host of Route 51 on Wisconsin Public Radio. I'm pretty transparent. What you see is what you get. Um, I don't pretend to be somebody that I'm not. And I think as a, as a leader, it helps people uh, who I work with know that when I say something, I mean it. When I say I'm gonna help, I mean it. And there's just, there's just not a lot of layers to, to get past. So um, that might be off-putting for some people, but, uh, but I, I just don't see, I don't see the point in trying to be somebody who I'm not. And I think that ultimately helps me in leadership roles because that authenticity does encourage trust. I just want to say that every year I look at that list of, of women who have been nominated and none of us know who took the time to, to nominate us, which in itself is amazing. And, and every single woman on that list, I think, oh, I mean, look at, look at everything that she does. Look at everything that she does. And it makes, if anything, it makes me want to be a better person. And I think that's the cool thing about this award. It reminds me to be a better person. Hi, my name is Candy Thurs. I'm a private wealth advisor for a legacy private trust company. I think about the greatest show on earth, uh, P.T. Barnum, right? He went out and found the most unique, dynamic individuals that he could possibly find authentically them, right? And he brought them all together and he created the greatest show on earth, right? That is what we all need to do. We all need to be P.T. Barnum, right? Whether it's in our, our home life, whether it's in our professional life, or whether we're serving the community, put together a group of authentic, unique, wonderful people and create the greatest show on earth. And whether it's at work, whether I've tapped a team member to help me put on an event to be able to really orchestrate what that's gonna look like, what it's gonna sound like, how we're gonna deliver that. I'm picking that person because I know they're gonna bring different things to the table than I probably would. I want them to know that they're important to the process and that they're important to the outcomes. You have to work hard to accomplish the things you want to accomplish. You have to be honest. You've gotta be trustworthy. And you've gotta make sure that you're kind, right? So I take, what are my traits? What are my core values? And how does that show up? So whether it's a, a new colleague that you're onboarding or whether it's someone that's been around a long time that you're motivating, or if it's in a community organization that you're, you're bringing someone along to take on that next role along beside you, what are you? You have to be helpful. You have to provide those resources, just like I do for my son. You've gotta make sure they have what they need to be successful. All right, a very impressive list of ladies and leaders. I'm so proud of each of you, but now is the time that we pick the recipient. But a reminder that we'll host a Facebook Live party at 2 p.m. today when we represent and present the award to the Athena Leadership Award recipient. Please make sure you log on for that. So now, with a bit of nerves and a bit of memory from last year when I was waiting to see who was named the winner. It is my pleasure to announce the 2020 Athena Leadership Award to, I'm shaking, and it's sealed really, really well, the 2020. Athena Leadership Award goes to Dr. Christine Gilmore.
of DC Everest. Congratulations, Christine. Very well deserved for all your years at DC Everest, but especially leading our children through this very difficult time. Congratulations. Congratulations to both the recipients and to each of the finalists. All of today's finalists are very deserving of being recognized for their achievements and contributions. Thank you all for being a part of today's Athena Leadership Award Program, and thank you again to the sponsors that make it possible. And finally, watch your emails in the coming weeks for details on the Women's Leadership Series to be held in the new year. Thank you for joining us today. Congratulations again to our recipients. Thank you again to our sponsors. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay healthy.